Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. It's time once again for our weekly painting progress. And I am sitting here stuffed after a wonderful dinner with wonderful drinks as well. And I'm at the point where my brain is starting to not think in English anymore and switching to Japanese. And my family has already swore at me that I am not to speak it. So I'm going to do my best to keep everything in English and just get this show on the road. Because that's the way to start the week, right? Right. Anyways, we've got in front of us Launch Code from Traders Galaxy, uh, part of their Rise of Democracy line, which is just a nice homage to the 80s and their gung-ho infatuation with, well, everything that encapsulated the 80s. But yes, it's a very G.I. Joe-ish figure, and I am absolutely here for it. And unfortunately, the original model on the website, which as always, we'll have those links to down below, is done up almost entirely in white armor, and I hate painting white. I'm just not good at it. But then again, I'm not a professional painter, and <laughs> as my paint jobs can attest, uh, we're, we're aiming for like middle of the road. It passes muster for just sitting on the tabletop, and I'm okay with that, and hopefully you guys are too. And if you're not, I, I apologize to a degree, but I don't really because I'm okay with it. And you should be too. Anyway, fun figure, fun line of models. Um, I mean, honestly, Trader's Galaxy just keeps putting out interesting stuff. And I am eagerly anticipating some of the things that I know are coming down the pipeline. And when they do come, believe you me, we will be seeing them on this channel. I've got a bunch of their Red Guard guys almost finished that's that's the thing lately i feel like half the models on my table are almost finished much like our friend launch code here who has languished for at least the last month like three quarters of the way painted uh i just never finished him unfortunately but he's done now so that's the important thing and also done now who has been languishing even longer is this random war games atlantic goblin with what looks to be a victrix or a uh, possibly War Games Atlantic Shield. I don't even know whose shield that is. So this was an interesting figure because as I was painting it, I have absolutely no idea what's going on with his legs. It looks like he's got like tattered pants on one leg and like some kind of weird... I, I think he's got like some kind of, you know, leg armor on the other. I'm not 100% sure, and it just, things seem to mesh together, which is a shame, and I didn't do the best job on his face, and I will also attest to the fact that this is at like a 3.5 zoom, so, you know, you can see every little horrible splotch, at least from a distance, when it's in focus. I mean, it looks okay, it gets the job done. It's a goblin. Who's going to ever fight one goblin at a time, right? I mean, maybe if it's like a confrontation goblin, we might have some kind of argument there. In fact, I just found a bunch of confrontation goblins I had tucked away in a box, and I'm going to have to get to those if I don't forget where I put them already. Which, as I take a sip of coffee, I'm, I'm kind of realizing I'm, I'm not 100% sure where I put them. So, shoot. That's a problem. Alright, why don't we continue with actual physical models rather than just 3D printed stuff. I got Bulkhead painted up. Bulkhead was a guard model from Privateer Press's Riot Quest game, and unfortunately, you know, I really enjoyed it. I actually ran through the rules a few times on my own just to get a good handle on everything, and of course, once the time came for everybody else to play, and everybody was like, I don't want to do that, and there were multiple people who did that, so I'm not like pointing fingers at one specific person or anything, but yeah, nobody wanted to play with me, sadly. They are cool figures, though. I still am on the hunt as I bang the camera here trying to brighten it up. Still on the hunt for a few of the expansions, especially the Karchev Deathjack model, which looked really fun. This guy is heavy. He is a solid metal piece. I want to say it was three or four pieces originally. Legs, torso, shield, and gun hand. I mean, that sounds right, but it's been ages since I put them together. Believe it or not, I do think there's a video on him when he was put up originally, so you might want to take a look at that if you're interested. I know these models are still floating around out there. They do have rules in War Machine, if that is something you are interested in. I mean, he just looks neat, and honestly, I painted him up 
when I was impatiently waiting for Privateer to send me those new, um, not the Man of Wars, whatever the new Intercessors or something. I don't even know what they're called. I just did a video on them too. And there's like a close combat unit coming up because Privateer has been teasing the fact that um, naturally the hero units don't have helmets, which is silly. But God, what were they called? I don't even know. One of these days I'm going to have to get myself one of those big uh, Man of War like tankers, suppressors, I think they were called. They were like on 50 millimeter bases. I don't think they were war jacks, but they were just big suits of armor with like these shield arms. They looked really cool. We'll get one one of these days. I guess we'll move on to the paint printed stuff that I painted. We'll start with a model from Raging Heroes, and his eyes are absolutely awful. This was from their Celtic release, if I remember correctly. And he's supposed to be like the king of the elves. I'm awful with Celtic names. I'm not even going to try. It's a nice model, but then again, most of the stuff that Raging Heroes puts out is quite nice anyways. And I know some of you have asked in the past if I would be doing some videos on some of their releases, and I promise you I will this month. I've got a stack of their stuff waiting to be dealt with. And it just always blows my mind how crazy the sculpts are. And yet it's all one single piece. There's a lot going on here. So kudos to whoever is behind the supporting of the 3D prints for Raging Heroes because you are doing one heck of a job. In fact, I just printed off one of the angels from December set. And again, single piece. And it was just absolutely ludicrous how much stuff was going on with that thing. Very impressive. Speaking of impressive supports, we are continuing with some firepower support from the Dragon Trapper's Lodge. I keep talking about their Children of the Flame army. And I want to say that December is going to be the last month that they are moving forward with this army. They have two tiers on their Patreon. They have like the adventurer tier for the more RPG focused folks. And then the wargaming crowd. They've got the Children of the Flames, which have just an absolute ludicrous amount of different units. Except we still don't have any basic infantry like this. This is actually a veteran. And you can tell he's a veteran because he's got more heavily armored uh, body on him. And he's got the big heavy weapons. But uh, we don't have any, like, just bolt-action rifle male Draxies, I believe, are the term for the Dragonborn models from Dragon Trapper's Lodge. As you can see, he's got a double-barreled heavy flamer. And I snapped off one of the prongs there on his spare, unfortunately. That is the more heavily armored one. Here is a more lightly armored one. Again, filming these late at night probably doesn't do me any favors in terms of lighting, but it is what it is. Have him at home, went and saw Godzilla Minus One the other day, or two day, whatever day it was. And I gotta say, I was absolutely impressed. I went in with absolutely low expectations and was really, really entertained. And my wife kept rolling her eyes when I told her about it. I'm like, no, no, it really was a good movie. She's like, you say that about all those tokusatsu, but it really was a good movie. So hopefully we'll get a chance to show her. I was really impressed. If you guys haven't seen it yourselves, I, I think absolutely really cool one. Much like these models. I've got that Lord of the Print uh, Godzilla model from a while back. All primed and ready to go, and I haven't done anything with it yet. Another Children of the Flame. This is a cannon-wielding veteran if I'm remembering correctly. Again, veterans, I think, are the only ones of the models so far currently that are wearing helmets. And unfortunately, they do not have much in the way of firepower that is smaller. We have the specialists and the rangers, which are more of the female dragonborn Draxy models. And they have those kinds of things and sniper rifles and heavy crossbows and stuff this month. But sadly, the boys don't get those nice, simple toys. They get the big stuff. All right. Last but not least, I've been talking about these models from Denny Koi, and I can't find any information about the actual sculptor. Uh, a while back, 
couple weeks ago, I believe. I showed you one of the more regular portioned ones, proportioned ones, I should say, if I know my words in English correctly. But this week, this is more of what the actual line is like. Uh, this guy is more an outlier. Most of them are big, portly, mean looking dudes with chipped up swords, inadequate armor in the inappropriate or wrong spots altogether, and lots of alcohol on their bodies. If that sounds good to you, absolutely check them out. I did try to paint his eyes. It's kind of hard to see them in there. And as always, we did an awful job on the support removal underneath certain parts. I really like this guy. But then again, I'm, I'm just a sucker for Oni models in general or Japanese themed stuff as it is. So, you know, shock of shocks, right? Zoom things out. I don't know about you guys, but these Kingdom Death lid boxes are just fantastic for organizing whatever the heck it is I am talking about for the week. But yeah, he'll he'll fit in quite nicely with the rest of my red oni. As always, like we mentioned before, we'll have some links down below. You guys can take a look at all these models yourselves. I'm quite pleased with myself. It's a nice little haul all things said and done and I have a few models that hopefully I will be able to finish this week as well barring any of life's usual craziness but I figured that's going to be a guarantee as always if you guys have any questions comments or things that you feel that should be on this channel by all means please let me know you can find me obviously on this channel hit me up on discord I don't know have your favorite sculptors artists drop me a line if you think they have some cool stuff that i should be sharing by all means i mean i'm not picky about this stuff if they have cool stuff i'll probably show it off or i'll be at the very least aware of its existence and i'm always looking for new things to show off as it is so with that said then this has been high lord tamberlain with obscurities and miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon Bye bye